Hey guys, welcome back to Beast Quest. Series 9, Book 3. Koraka, the Winged Assassin. And I have to say, reluctantly, this is the worst book so far of Series 3. I hate to say that, but it is. Even worse, of, even worse than Ursus. And the reason is, well, the, I will point out what the good elements are and the bad, but first, of course, let's go over the story. Tom and Elena were desperate for food, and after the defeat of Minus the, after the defeat of Minus the Bull, this is where a major oh my god moment from the last book, as they were given a food bag from Jenka's mother after defeating Minus, and if Tom was so concerned with food. He should have taken that feast offer from the last book. So, and to be honest, this goes on for a bit with Tom going on about the food struggle, which is a big major to what happened in the last book. If you remember in my review on Minus, I said that Tom was given a food bag from Jenka's mother. Now, the only thing that outstretches this, I guess, is if that... Tom ate the food before off without us seeing it, you know? But why would they acknowledge it without, or, you know, why would they bring that up as a food source unless, so that uh, us as viewers put on our heads, okay, Tom has his food supply now, but now he doesn't. And, if everyone's, and I can imagine other people be thinking the same thing as me. The only explanation is this was this the food bag was eaten off off reading time, you know, not in the books, but like on their travels without us, you know, reading it. So on, on we go. Tom and Eleanor reach the field and discover a broken a broken butt bit trap where with there only being one trap. I can strongly assume that that's where Cora, the shepherdess, was turned into her beast form. Because in the prologue, that's what happened. Uh, the shepherdess was turned and was caught in a trap. Also, there was a wound, a wounded mother sheep and a baby. Tom healed the mother sheep and Marvel showed up claiming that he had reached the eternal flame. Tom still vows to kill Marvel, by the way. Of course, Tom explains if Malvel had reached the Eternal Flame, he would have no need to send a beast out after him. Since they checked the map earlier and several elements pointed to there being another beast, with the dead sheep and the damaged trees still in, still in search for food, they came across a town and, en and enter an empty house. Not wanting to steal, they leave the harp from, the, from Ursus behind. Mind you, last time I checked, that harp was destroyed by Ursus in his mouth. Which Tom and Ellen, so which Tom must have some remaining gold fragments from it. I'm guessing. However, before Tom and Ellen acted, acted the owner returned, lightly pissed before Tom and Ellen could explain the situation. Yeah, so angry. So the angry mob ensues, and they capture our heroes. Tom and Ellen were taken to the stocks, despite their efforts of trying to communicate with the crowd. They just threw fruit and veg at them, accusing them of thievery and kidnapping one of the shepherdesses, Cora. Petra showed to join in the fun, and a storm was caught, but Silver made the run for it. It got worse when Koraka had arrived, everyone left, and Tom and Eleanor were stuck in the stocks. Tom and Eleanor watched in horror as Koraka destroyed the town. Soon Eleanor whistled for Silver and freed them from the stocks, but when they reached Storm, their weapons had been taken. Tom and Eleanor assumed that the beast could be one, could be once a human. I don't know how they jumped to that conclusion, but they figured it out. They, so they think it's, it was a human, as they saw the, the look in her eyes and the ripped clothes. Yeah, okay, that's good evidence to support that. Tom went over to Chris, one of the captors, and demanded their weapons so they could fight off Koraka. Chris agreed if they could help him find his son. However, it turns out Koraka had taken him in her talons and flew off. Tom assured Chris he would return his son, and Chris saw the look in his eyes of trust. Returning their weapons, Chris promised them a reward for their services, and Tom ignored, saying he didn't do this for reward. Mind you, he could have asked for food, since the whole point of coming here was to get a meal, you know. But Tom and Anna 
head off until they reach Koraka's mountain. Tom told Aldana to stay here with Storm and Silver. Despite her fa face of reluctance, she agreed, and Tom eventually reached the top, where he found Frida and Koraka. Koraka's nest, that is. Not Frida and Koraka's nest, you know. There was also some minor stuff with Petra, but that was more of standard taunts from her, so it wasn't really necessary to put in here. Tom gave away his location to Frida and told him to be quiet. However, when Frida was free, Tom was unsure how to get him out of here. But then Koraka returned and she was pissed. Tom tried to fight her off, but she easily dodged his attacks. Eventually, Tom remembered Eagle Feather from Arcta. He told Frido to grab hold of him, and they jumped off the mountain, gliding down safely. However, Koraka was coming in fast. Tom and Frida were close to the ground, but Koraka had them in her talons. Despite Tom telling Frida to let go, he was too scared, but Tom decided to tickle Frida in order for him to fall and be caught by Elena. Tom was on a wild ride, hanging from his shield, as Koraka swung him about. Soon enough, he had lost his grip of his shield and pulled out his sword and stabbed into the rock, for it, into the rock to break his impacting speed. As he was flung from the shield, but then Koraka landed on the top of the ledge where Tom was, where Tom was, while Eleanor was trying to pull out the right token. Soon enough, Tom believed that the whistle was the right one. But it wasn't working, and despite Tomnik knocking away Koraka's spear, it wouldn't be a matter of time before she retrieved it and flew back up. Tom looked like he was he was screwed as Koraka lifted him up in her claws, but in the ev but in a, but then of course every bird in Seraph came swarming around Koraka. When the birds pecked her in the way of battle he led them back to the town. This is a result of the um, whistle. It did work. It was like a dog whistle, only infecting not hearing the beast or Tom, but the birds of Seraph. Where Tom, anyway, Tom made reached the town, and where Tom had made his escape, he crashed into a hut, but was quickly recovered. However, he heard another crash outside and came to the conclusion he hoped that the person was alright because he didn't want the beast to be killed because he assumed it to be a human with the ripped clothes. Tom ran to the beast to make sure she wasn't dead. He found Karaka's spear and saw the beast planning to escape. He tossed Karaka's spear into her own wing and she bled out purple poison. Tom, no Tom noticed this as Malvo's magic. Chris was angry, believing that Karaka had killed Fredo until his son cried out. He was there. And then Karaka was now unable yeah, and then Koraka was now unable to fly anymore, which caused her the spell to break. That's what, that's just my theory of why the spell broke how it did, because she was her wings were busted and she was unable to be the winged assassin anymore, so that's why the spell broke. Um so yeah, spell break. She reverted back to Cora the Shepherdess. Chris thanked Tom and offered him a feast for their victory. This time Tom accepted it, but only for one night, as he knew every day we they may they will every day will make Malvo that much closer to reaching the eternal flame. And that is Koraka the Winged Assassin. Overall, I have to say this is the weakest book in series nine so far. Because of two of a of, of, of couple things. One, the food point that I've mentioned before. Two, Ursus's harp was brought up here and that was smashed from the on the first book. And um, the fact that you've got Tom, and yeah, Tom is another thing. In this book, in yeah, it's happened off in the other two books, but this one is an extension of what his problem is in this series. He seems to be reluctant to allow others to help him. I think this has happened in past series, but with the way he um, doesn't want Eleanor to get involved, it's kind of a letdown for her character not to do much. But I think... In our next book review, we will get some Eleanor more involved. Because even though Koraka is the weakest book for me so far, I do like the it's one redeeming element is the fact that Malvo turns a human into a beast, which is kind of unique for the series, which is its only redeeming element I can find, really. Because, you know, you're dealing with actual human life here. And uh, that's kind of a bummer. 
So, Tom has to be careful of what beasts he kills in and tries not to. So, like I said, Elena might get a better role in the next book because next time is the book review that I've been waiting to do. I've reviewed this book before because it looks so awesome, the concept of it looked awesome in general, but it's been a while since I've read that and I'm happy to say with great ex determination and hope for this book that Series 9 can make a comeback with it because our next review is Silver the Wild Terror. Mm-hmm. That silver. Till next time, guys. Like, subscribe. All that good stuff. Peace.